And with that, I can continue to momentum contrast. This is Moco. This figure is gonna help us a lot. So we are gonna go back to it as we go through the math. You are gonna have some tokens which are gonna correspond to your keys. These are samples from the data, which could be your images, which could be image patches. And uh, these are basically these Ks, K0, K1, K2, etc. And they are coming out of your images being pushed through an encoder. And this way, you are turning unsupervised learning to a dictionary lookup problem. I have a query, which one of these keys is the most similar to me? And then that's gonna give you your contrastive loss. So it's another way of thinking about contrastive loss as a dictionary lookup problem. In a dictionary of answers or potential answers, find the correct answer, find the correct key matching the query. And the idea of contrastive loss is that your query should be similar to its matching key and dissimilar to any other key. So there is this pull and push relationship. You're pulling your query closer to the correct key and pushing it apart from the incorrect ones. And then you're gonna do instance discrimination task. A query is gonna match a key. So Q is gonna match one of these keys, which are perhaps coming out of different crops of your images. If uh, the query and the key are encoded views of the same image, and then you're gonna say that my query is matching the key. For contrastive learning, you have your encoded query, you have a set of encoded samples. This is a key of keys in a dictionary. So this stuff we covered, so there is nothing new so far. There is a single positive key in the dictionary that is gonna match your query. This is the correct answer to your query. And then you want to increase the probability of the query matching uh, its corresponding key. So you are making your query similar to the correct answer while pushing the negative answers far from the query. You're gonna set a temperature 0.07. Usually your query example is gonna be pushed through a neural network. This is your encoder network that's gonna give you a queue. Your keys, you can in your mini batch, look at a bunch of images, push them through their corresponding neural network, get a bunch of keys, and then write down this loss function. But we know that these three properties matter. One of them we just saw, that the larger is the number of the negative examples, the better is gonna be the quality of the representations that you're gonna get out of it. We just saw it, we saw a mathematical reason because it's gonna help you increase the mutual information between the query image and the key image and the correct key image. And intuitively speaking, the more negatives you have, one of them is gonna be with a high likelihood, very similar to one of the, to the correct answer, and then your network is working harder. And therefore it's gonna give you better representations. So having a larger dictionary helps. Uh, it matters that this queue that you have here is dynamic. So it's, it needs to change from time to time. The other one is that this dictionary is a good idea for it to be consistent. Why? Because while you're optimizing your loss function, you're always comparing yourself to something that is consistent. When you were sampling your positive and negatives from the current mini batch, your dictionary is not that consistent. It keeps changing from one iteration of your optimization algorithm to the next iteration because your mini batch is changing. You're randomly sampling it from your data. It would be good to have these uh, keys to be consistent. This is the same way that you would do classification. You always have 10,000 classes and per each class you have a vector. This is the last layer of your neural network. And these vectors are consistent. You want to have a similar property here. And at the same time, it has to be dynamic. Otherwise, uh, these are not gonna be good keys to compare yourself to because here, unlike supervised learning, you don't know the ground truth. You don't know your labels. And the idea is this dictionary, treat it as a queue. Sometimes you're gonna add stuff to it and sometimes you're gonna remove stuff at the end. 
basically your current mini batch is going to be enqueued to the dictionary and then the oldest mini batch is going to be removed not only that the only thing that you're optimizing over are the parameters of your encoder the parameters of your momentum encoder are going to get updated using the exponential moving average of the parameters of your encoder and then there is also another benefit you can save a lot of computations here per each iteration you don't have to take your images in your queue and push them through your momentum encoder to get the corresponding keys just store the keys in your list and if a new set of images come in push them through your encoder and then uh, you are going to have a queue of features that you're keeping so you're caching these queue you don't need to recompute them all the time and this is where the consistency is going to come in so there is not going to be any gradients passing through this layer you're going to stop here so is everything clear so far okay perfect otherwise if you don't store these keys what's going to happen if, is you need to take all of these images which you are going to have a lot of them push them through your neural network not only it's going to be computationally expensive you're going to run into memory issues with your gpus if you are not passing any gradients store the keys and perfect and the only thing that is going to get updated by back propagation are these theta cues your encoder here is a pseudocode of momentum contrastive learning you have two networks initially this is the encoder networks for your query and keys you're going to have a queue of your keys which you can perhaps um, model it using the matrix you're going to have k keys k is going to be large and each one of these keys are featureized images and let's say the feature dimension is c so this q here you can represent it with a matrix which is c by q and this should remind you of something you have a q of k keys if you think of k as the number of clusters you can think of this matrix as your cluster centers and this should remind you of deep cluster what is the difference here your clusters are dynamically changing each time that you process a new mini batch you're going to add them to your dictionary you're going to add new clusters what does it mean it means that each data point is its own cluster and then perturbations of those data points should be close to the cluster centers so each data point is its own cluster center and its perturbations should be close to the center now you see the relationship between contrastive learning and clustering then uh, you're gonna have some momentum parameter you're gonna have some temperature parameter your two neural networks are initialized to be the same you augment your data this is where you take a single image and get two images out of it or you take a mini batch and get two mini batches out of it which are random augmentations of the images in your mini batches push them through your neural network detach k it means that no gradients are going to go past this layer and then you need to know what is positive what is negative the positive stuff are clear what they are it's a different augmentation of the same image this is batch matrix multiply of q and key your negative example is the matrix multiply of your key and your q which is the set of keys or that matrix up there you create your logits you write down your cross entropy loss which is this loss here and then you back propagate and then update the parameters of your q the parameters of your neural network k they're gonna be an exponential moving average of the parameters q and here is the how you're gonna construct your q you have your q you ended up with a new mini batch of keys you add that to your queue and then you remove the oldest stuff from the last mini batch let's see some transfer learning results the features that are going to come out of this process these queues you can show them to a shallow object detection head modify the object detection head basically train it and fine-tune 
the parameters of your encoder to some extent. The algorithm is faster RCNN. We cover it in part one of the course. This is for object detection. And then you can look at your average precision. This is momentum contrast. IN is for image net. It has 1 million images. And IG stands for Instagram. It has 1 billion images, more data, higher performance. Any questions about Moco? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.